Okay, I've been to the old ham mill back to Gilmore House. Oh, have you heard about a place to see? A witching well. Did you mean a wishing well? No different. A Gary friend dropped her handbag into it and it returned back containing fire and screams. What? Okay, go there, I guess. A smoldering creosote bush. Smoke pours out this nest of very hot ants. Caution! Do not throw anything that starts with H down this well. Defense isn't really accomplishing anything. You're not gonna let that sign tell you what to do, are you? Well, first I'm gonna fish. Throw something in the well. Let's see, things that start with H. Handful of holy water. Hmm, whoever's down there must not be interested in that handful of holy water. Throw some handful of clean water. Nope. Homemade cookie? You toss a cookie in the bucket and lower into the well. When you pull it back out, it evolves into a most common descendant of the cookie. Cake. I'm not sure that's how that works, but okay. Ooh, it increases everything by one. Dirty water? Nope, nothing. Hand washing gasoline. Gasoline in the bucket and lower into the well. You're a bubbling noise, so when you pull the bucket back up, it's getting a bottle of glowing red liquid. Liquid fire. Throw something else in. Hematic ichor. Liquefied and gotten really hot. Also, somebody down there apparently put it into a little bottle for you. Boiled blood. Not hard candy. Oh, devil's food cake. Handful of steam? Nope, handful of steam. No, but you put, try to put the steam in a bucket, but it won't stay in. Oh yeah, His Majesty's least, least favorite poems. Throw the useless book in the well. You lowered a terrible book into the well. It comes back in a more scorched, but also a more interesting form. You got an item. Posthumous works of the romance poets. Gives cold armor. Ooh. Book of poems written by the romance poets after were justifiably and appropriately consigned to the eternal fires of hell. There's something else in. Let's throw in heavy boots. Oh, okay. They're not interested in heavy boots. Uh, haunted duck call. You put the duck call in the bucket and lower into the well. When you pull it back up, it's somehow even worse than it was before. Cursed haunted duck call. Oh. That's not good. We're trying to stop curses. Uh, Hamas' choker? Toss a necklace in the bucket and lower it down. When it comes up, it's on more, more, more on fire than it was before. You got flame at this, flame at this choker. One muscle, five cold armor. What about hot rod? Nope. Same thing. Amethyst earrings? Well, amethyst earrings. Amethyst armband? Well, amethyst armband. Handsaw? Molten handsaw. Blade is white hot. Neat. I think that's all I can throw in for now. Ah, uh, downside is, this duck call is now both haunted and cursed. Let's, uh, let's go fix that. Uncursing machine. What would you like to uncurse today? The cursed haunted duck call. The machine gives a one big sniff and you guess? It's over. The cursed haunted duck call is now a hunt haunted duck call. Want to get rid of the haunting? That's a different machine. Curse of the haunted duck called lingers in the machine. Oh no. I can't go back.
Where are we going? The time has come. Assassinate? I'm sorry? You examine your haunted duck call. It's still haunted, but it seems to have been suffused by the power of that mysterious duck that quacked you right out of the curse construct. Upgrade. The curse has been vanquished, although you gain no love for duck kind. You're pretty sure this duck call is haunted, but you can't remember the story how it go how it got that way. Huh. Decrease all opponents' muscle mysticality and moxie by one. Once per fight. I'm not sure if that's an upgrade. Hmm. What if I... What if I try to curse it again? Oh, it's, it's cursed again. Hmm. Huh. Okay, now I see the difference. The before the haunted duck call was only for one opponent, but this is all opponents. Once per fight. It's still not that great. Okay. Uh, let's put that uh, Shadow Vanishing Ring on again. This lady unlocks is labeled RP Gilmore. Nothing interesting, just a stack of old junk mail. There's a page of what appears to be a diary tacked to this tree. Dorothy keeps bringing me socks with holes in them. She can't possibly try to humiliate me deliberately, but it's far too consistent to be random chance. A little plowshare is leaning against this tree. You got an old plowshare. It's a plowshare and you're keeping it all for yourself. Doris says Belgrand Bomb Proof Shelter Co. and it has serious combination lock on it. No bomb's gonna guess this one. Doris light the ajar. There's a loose page from the diary on that table. Eat its violin is too loud for me to relax at night. But if I take it away, she screeches horribly. I wonder if I can find her a smaller one. An animate dolls are in a workout routine? I'm sure it's fine and nothing to worry about. Door size, doll size barbell. Work out. What a workout! I created doll parts. See what's inside, just a bunch of creepy glass eyes. There's a book of children's horror stories on this childless man's table. Maybe it's for the dolls? Or maybe it's for you. Yeah, it's for you. You got items. Spook scary stories for spooky children. Stories in the grand tradition of traumatizing children with age inappropriate horrors. Grants an upgradable skill in Nightmare Alloy. Neat! This book was banned at school when you were a kid. The principal didn't think stories about dentists eating patients' teeth were appropriate for children, which is funny because that's what's exactly what ended up happening to him. And then you did have to hear about it. Dare you read on? Dare. The first story is too gruesome for words, literally. It's full of colors, illustration of alligators squeezing into a school bus through the exhaust and eating all the passengers. Chilling, and all the more so because it could really happen. This book is a fanciful travel travelogue of poet Sir Sa Samuel Taylor Coleridge's posthumous odyssey through the fiery wastes of hell, in the process of which he develops the skill of Coleridge's armor. You might be able to pick up a thing or two about that. You mean Coleridge? No. Anyway, you don't want Coleridge's armor. It only protects you against other Coleridge's. The book is mostly a catalog of minor slights thrown Coleridge's way by real-life figures from Albion's Lake District. All seems pretty petty and irrelevant, but the writer insists that understanding this is the foundation of Coldridge's armor. If anyone knows Cold, it's Samuel Taylor Coldridge. The second story concerns a group of children who trade baseball cards at school. It's all fun and games until the baseball player pictures the cars come to kill the children. This one really happened. Oof, you remember hearing about this one. Boy wakes up in a coffin six feet under. 
This terrified you as a kid. Now, you're more disturbed by the part where the boy gets out of the coffin and spends the next 40 years self-medicating his trauma until he dies of alcoholism. Oof. Ah, the old tale of the farmer Borge and his daughter. You hate to run across him on a rainy night. The more you read, the gladder you are that you didn't have access to this book as a child. Then again, it might have better might have prepared you better for the nonsense you're dealing with now. In his journey through hell, Cold Ridge recounts the fiendish punishment given to those persons who tormented him in life. Adam Smith, the newspaper tax collector. Person from Pollock. Porlock. In death, all are cursed to see water everywhere, but never be allowed to drink it. This same sanction does not affect Cold Ridge because he had Cold Ridge's armor. You learn the hell's full of various beasts, both great and small. In one chapter, an albatross tries to take a bite out of Cold Ridge's haunches, but he's protected by his epon eponymous armor. Cold Ridge's journey continues at some length, but it becomes that aggressive, rambling, and difficult to follow. Still, some useful information in here. Maybe just someone's diary pasted to the wall here. Must correct Velma's mechanism, so she'll squeeze the toothpaste from the end of the tube instead of the middle. I'm losing a fortune in wasted paste. A crate of doll parts. An entire crate full of those horrible little mouths. Oh, tiny radio produces a tinny sound. Use the gadget. One more radio to go. This doll scratching out gibberish on a tiny sheet of paper. One of those newfangled plastic candle toilet brushes you've read about all in the papers. Take it. The future is yours to wield. Newfangled toilet brush. Given that time, science will always come up with a new ways to clean a toilet. Flush the toilet. Page from a diary is stapled to the wall. Something defected with Ruth. She's doing twice as much of everything she ought to be. Must have gotten her gear ratios wrong. The sink is currently occupied where a creepy talking doll is bousing the value of good hygiene. Look past it at the mirror. Bye, Slime. Bye, Slime. As long as you don't stand with your back to that doll, this seems safe to fish in. A simple cupboard. Ow! Ow. Created doll parts. Doll legs. Just left one. They must they must not be for dancing dolls. Oh hey, nestle among them is that spring Wendelin wanted. You got counterclockwise mainspring. Let's see what's so special about Oh wait, you're looking at it backwards. Yeah, this is a special spring, alright. Stop throwing eggs at me. Modern fridge. See if its contents are also modern. Fridge is empty, but the freezer is full of fruity ice pops. Some of the pages of page from their diaries to the wall here. I'm stuck in a rut. Every day is the same routine. Eat breakfast, get dressed, brush my teeth, exercise, work on my novel, go to bed over and over. Always the same. I thought the dolls would help, but they've only made things worse. I feel like I might go crazy. In fact, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I think I'll start right now. Huh. Ah, warm hands. Ooh, cold armor. Talking dolls throwing eggs at you from atop these cabinets. One drawer you can read without having to get too close to that doll. Do it. Junk mail, fuse, comfy hat lining. Box of toys for other toys. See if there's anything good. You got doll size chemistry set. This chemistry set is so small that its pipe beds are more like pipe bed heads. A rubber rubber plant. One of these dolls must be allergic to real rubber plants. Created doll parts. Oh my god, why do dolls even need hearts? This is just pointlessly creepy. Diary page peeks out from under the pillow. I don't feel well. I think Gladys put something in my coffee. Not just eggs, like she always does, accidentally. I believe this was purposeful. I believe I shouldn't base their mechanism on this strange old doll I found. Grace, I wonder where she went. You only need two socks at a time. A dresser. Address it. Hello, dresser.
leaf from a diary is nestled among the dirty laundry. Read it. Abigail listened to pins on my barbell. I nearly dropped it on my head. She's definitely trying to kill me. I think they all are. Hellstrong can have the house on the main property. I'm going into hiding. I'm going to attack these pages all over the house, make it clear that I'm insane. They're not going to live in my bomb shelter. Scratch that. It's a doll shelter now. Huh. Create doll parts. Just doll arms. Dozens of awful little arms. All pants. Shirts must be in a different closet. If you're quick, you can probably grab these socks without getting eaten by that creepy doll. Do it. You grab the socks and feel like a real sock dog dolliger for doing so. You got fancy dress socks. Neat. Oh, I think I know what the password to that outside is. Oh, where was it? It was in this room. Okay. Breakfast, dress, brush, exercise, work, go to bed. So, kitchen, closet, kitchen, closet, bathroom, hallway, hallway, bed. So, four eggs. Two socks. Three minutes. Nine reps. Eight pages. No, wait. One of these said twice as much of everything she ought to be. I'm guessing this is Ruth. So Abigail's a barbell one. Gladys is the breakfast. Dorothy is the socks. Velma is a toothpaste. So Ruth should be this one, but this is making her double, but the mechanism is making her double, so this is actually four. So the actual order is four, two, three, nine, four, and eight. I did it, I'm a genius. You hear a click from inside the massive steel door. Looks like you got it. I mean, sounds like you got it. Head inside. A pile of unlabeled sealed crates. The man cringes and backpedals frantically as you approach. S stay back! How'd you get in here? Did the dolls send you? No, calm down. The dolls didn't send me. But who are you? What do you want? Name's Slime. You must be Gilmore? The Wendelin sent me to over to see if he had a counterclockwise mainspring he could use. I already found it, but I thought maybe I could check on you in here. You been in the house? Can you see the... 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 the dolls? Ah! Look, they're a little creepy, I guess, but they're not that bad. They're just dolls. You're trying to kill me! Yeah, I saw your diary page, but honestly, I think you're overreacting. Diary? Oh, you mean my novel? Novel? Yes, I've been writing an ep... I've been writing an epistolary novel in diary form about a toy maker who goes crazy because he thinks these dolls are trying to kill him. Ah, and he nails the pages of his diary around a house and hides in a bomb shelter in his yard? Right, exactly! Okay, so you aren't actually scared of your dolls, you're just acting it out like method writing. No, no, no! The dolls are trying to kill me, just like in a novel! I'm not a psychologist, but I think you might be suffering from extreme confusion. You aren't the guy in the novel, you're the guy writing the novel. That's two different guys that dolls aren't trying to kill you. Are... are you sure? You just freaked yourself out of writing a scary book with circumstances similar to your own, that's all. Maybe you're right. Okay. Okay, I'll come out just as soon as I finish the last chapter. As soon as I remember where Grace is. Several pairs of Gilmore undergarments are shooting about his bed. You were caught unawares by his clock underwears. The last diary entry is unfinished, but it seems to be about protagonists huddling in his bomb shelter and waiting for the dolls to come get him. Grim. 
Gilmore fidgets nervously. I suppose you found a counterclockwise mainspring? I did. Here you go. But I'll be. Thank you kindly. Seeing as you've proven yourself helpful, sort of, I've been let you in the store. Pretty much all of us around here got a thing or two could use doing. Swell. That was sarcasm. I hear ya. He gets up and knocks on an odd pattern door to the feed store. Then you hear someone inside removing the bar. Thanks. Met that Gilmore guy. Oh, how was he doing? Is that name's bomb shattered because he thought his dolls were trying to kill him? That's a shame. Figures though. Don't ever put a face on a machine. People get confused too easy. You're just giving one of the names a bad idea. Guess so. Ooh, radio. What are you doing? Don't you know that this very minute Mars is the closest it's been to opposition to Earth for a century? I studied at SIT under... Huh. Never actually learned my teacher's name. Almost every transmitter in the world has stopped broadcasting for 60 seconds in case any Martian signal speaks through the radio. And have they? I don't know. You changed the station. Whoops. Sorry. Don't sweat it. Mars was never my favorite planet anyway. Too much silica. Then we Oscaloosa. Oscaloosa Barnhill. Yeah, that's right. My male name is Oscar Osk. Also Oscaloosa. Hi, Jeff. Out. But my friend Wendelin. Looking for more work by any chance? What's that you're playing with? Puzzle box. And Trixie pick up a puzzle too. Maybe I could solve it for you. But then I won't have solved it, and I'll know what type of lock to put on my cell. That's an unusual name. My folks named me after the town where they met. Ooh, where was that? Oskaloosa. Huh. Use Rufus's gadget. There we go, now we have 11 radios. Bags of donkey feet, and what else? Heavy sacks of donkey feet. Sizable sacks of pig feet. Immense bags of ewe feed. Bulky bags of ram feed. Bulky sacks of sheep feed. Giant sacks of buffalo feed. Colossal sacks of pig feed. Heavy sacks of goat feed. Sizable bags of ram feed. Okay, we're just repeating. Science is back in an hour. Somebody scrolled, yeah, right, in the thick layer of dust on the counter. Door's not messing around. Also, it's barred from the other side. Try the knock pattern. You knock in the same pattern you heard at the front door. Nothing happens. Wrong code, Jughead, one of the chess players mutters from the front of the store. Old man seems like he's really into chess. Talk to him. Hey there, I'm Slime. How do you do? Pixley's a name. Grover Pixley. He might be a real fortuitous encounter. You gotta help me to help an old man with something. How's your game going? Real good. I think I got him on the ropes this time. Checkmate. Shucks, I guess I spoke too soon. Best out of 397? Sure, rack him up. Why is the back door closed? Why is any back room closed? Employees only. Might be an employee. I'm an employee of surprising places. Not this place, I'd know. I'll come back to you after I get the other task done. is cracking the sky in the space of a single charged second a wide farm road is drenched with fast falling rain that bites to the bone it's farm rain all right cold as ice and twice as nasty long and level plains of this country offer no shelter except perhaps for a lone house you spy off in the distance about half a mile to the east keep going exactly where you were going A silent anvil next to a roaring forge, not pictured. Beat your plowshare into a sword. You divert some assets from infrastructure to warfare. Plowshare to swords. This pile of firewood is in a disorganized mess. There we go. This sheep has evidently taken up smoking cigars and a having a human face is smoking out of. Ah? Nice try, but you aren't pulling the wool over my ass. Heh, <laughs> well, it was worth a shot. I'm Beatrice. Yeah, I'm slime. Why are you dressed as a disguised as a sheep? Well, I was hobo and passed this place. It's all high cool on a windowsill. Oh, wow. Exactly. No hobo can resist that. Just about to sneak up to gravity attack by a whole bunch of humongous ducks. I disguised myself as sheep to get them to leave me alone. That's a surprisingly sensible reason. Thank you. Know any hobo code you could teach me? Those giant ducks still wandering around? Well, yeah. Well, I teaching you hobo code would blow my cover. Then, 
Probably shouldn't be talking like this. <laughs> ah! Ah! Right, ducks. Let's close this. I think block of ice is in here because someone forgot to halt the brooch. Doesn't seem to be melting for some reason. Not gonna touch that. This farmer seemed very upset about something. Everything okay? No, it bloody ain't. A great flock of du giant ducks that all invaded me and farm and all. They're going and tell me all buildings. Uh, hmm. Do you want some help with that? Oh, well, standing here and waving me arms and yelling and say having much effect. So I could do with the harm, I reckon. Aye, ye great numpty. Okay, I'm on it. Ducks everywhere, I'm telling you. The barrel barrel, the dunk stick, the girdle, the ice brush, the slop and chillin, the steamy. What's a steamy? As for doing the laundry and all, war, we take gore bats there too. Nothing like a hot bath after a hard dog. What's a kernel? What do you think a kernel is? It's a kernel for storing grins. It, gr storing grins, ain't it? Okay. It's a barrel barrel? The pilots don't what we use to bury the barrels under. A barrel for barrels, they can. What's a butt for? Oh, to give your sick if they burn your lips. Nice try, your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Shucks. Slop and shield in for hop. The shield that we use for slog hopping, I mean hog slopping. Crime is a leather and they're doing me head in. What's an ice brooch? This is the brush we keep the ice in. What's a brooch? They're kidding, we keep the ice in. Are you not listening? What's up, Doc? Dukes! <laughs> of course, right. Okay, barrel, barrel, dump. Okay, barrel, barrel, dungstead, gurnal, ice brooch, slop and shield, and steamy. This is Mc McMillicuddy, McMillican Cuddy Steamy Hut. You hear a lot of splashing and loud duck noise coming from the inside. You open the door to a room full of tin baths and wash tubs, plus a couple large stoves for heating water on. Giant ducks are splashing around the tubs, boiling big bucket ups of water to fill the room with steam, and generally just having a raucous sauna party. I could build a haunted duck call. You're questioning work from inside, but otherwise ducks don't seem interested. Fine, turn up the heat. With all the steam, ducks don't notice you enter right away. You throw more coal in the fire and stoke them extra hot, and soon the whole steamy is boiling hot enough to run an industrial turbine. Ducks start fainting left and right, and the more resilient ones stagger outside and stumble away, panting. You drag the fainted ones to the barn and lock them inside for safekeeping. Get them. Apparently a shilling. Is it some sort of a hut or a shed? This one smells like a place where pigs eat, which is an idea reinforced by the rows of feeding trolls for a full of ripening garbage. Several large barrels of leftover cooking oil. Being of huge duck scenes have taken particular interest in the oil and are gooshing it around the place and are generally wrecking everything with the wild abandon. Investigate. These duck look like they're slippery characters, which made all this more so by the fact that cooking grease they're throwing around. Ducks ignore your haunted duck call. Maybe it isn't big enough, or haunted enough. If I use a cursed one, will they run? Uh, I don't think I want to curse it again. Chase them out of here. You weather the storm of gross oil and verbal abuse and boot the ducks out of the shielding. It's pretty easy once they lube up it. It only takes about one boot to make them slide out the door into the barn. Apparently it's a green sign not where you go to make funny faces. Noises coming from inside are about what you expect to hear from several giant ducks that have found their way into an actual grain silo. You climb the ladder and peer in. A bunch of very large, now even larger, ducks are swimming around happily in max grain. Much like I would if the silo was full of mini marshmallows. Hmm, eight physical armor. How much armor do I have? Filter everything for physical armor. Yes, give me Gator Man pants. Oh no, work pants. It has better armor.
Ah, stone frat cap. All the man out of there. Having gorged themselves on max green swords, the ducks are too sleepy to do much to you. Their feeble blows bounce off your armor as you shove them out of the girdle and roll them to the barn for safekeeping. Okay then. This building is uh, not so much a building as a huge pile of manure. For some reason, it's uh, probably a horrible one. It's been excavated into a sort of a cave. Ugh. You hear a bunch of giant ducks quacking away happening in there. Seems unreal that anything could be happy to be anywhere near it. Your eyes start to water as you pick peek inside. A few large and extremely filthy ducks are lounging around in there. It's unclear if they were filthy to begin with, or if that's just a natural result of the situation. Alright, Stan Charmer it is. Take a deep breath. You take a deep breath and hold it as long as you can, which turns out to be just long enough to go inside there and shoo all the ducks out. They leave without much fuss, probably because they're surprised by your fortitude, and wander over to the barn. Grab the ice! That's a big block of ice just sitting here. I guess someone forgot to haul it to the brooch? Doesn't seem to be melting for some reason. You got an enchanted ice block. Let's take it to Speakeasy. Ooh! The little stone tower has been converted into a storage shed for storing ice, if McMillan can is to be believed. Why wouldn't he be? He's a, it's his farm. You look in the door and several huge ducks chilling inside, literally chilling, sitting on big blocks of ice. Ducks don't seem to mind the cold at all. Maybe they're the sword that fly north for the winter. Break the ice. Since professional ice hockey's only been local to the area for about four years, it's no wonder that these ducks weren't expecting you to just charge in and body check them right out the door and into the barn. Not so mighty now. This pile of rocks is apparently a barrow, that is, a sort of tomb made by piling up rocks. Back Milliken Cuddy called it a barrow barrel though, which is less clear. No need to barrow a dictionary. You hear an ominous rhythmic quacking loud from within. As though several very large ducks were chanting ancient cult rites. You peek inside a barrow and discover that, yes indeed, several very large ducks are in fact chanting an ancient cult rites in there. Also, the place is strewn with pig bones, and I don't know how you learned to identify pig bones specifically, but I guess a arrow is also a type of pig? Okay. More spooky armor. Exercise the ducks. Since you don't know any actual rituals to banish cultist ducks, you decide to just wing it. <laughs> anyway, basically you knock over their candles and mess up their magic circle and yell about blasphemy and stuff until the party is so thorough is thoroughly ruined and they all leave, muttering gloomily. So there. Go back to that uh, Monster Club sash back on. Yeah, I took care of those ducks for you. Ah, you did take to be shattered, I will be holding to your pal. Couldn't have deal with them ducks on my aunt. That's for certes. There's something you was wanting then. Oh, right. Met a name. Lady named Xenia, who says she loaned you a paperweight? She needs it back. Paperweight, she called it. Yeah. Well, no, I suppose that could be good boy in a pinch. Here you are then, tell her how's it going for me. Yeah, it's that kind of paperweight. Thanks, bye. You know any hobo code you can teach me? Does giant duck still wander around? Nope, took care of him. Safe now. Well, that's a huge relief. Sure, I know some farm related hobo code. Thanks. Tell me about the hobo camp. Ah, great, my back is killing me. Long walk up right to, like a normal human being sound pretty good right about now. She stands up haltingly and limps away without removing the costume. Okay. Ooh, great like them. It's the barn you've been herding the ducks into, and looks like they won't be able to cause too much trouble in there, but you can still fight a few if you're feeling like it. No thanks, I'm good. Ah, 